All right, Algebra, Chapter 4 Review, let's go. If you've mastered how to find the slope and B, the y-intercept, then you've pretty much mastered most of this test. All right, put this in slope-intercept form. That's y equals mx plus B. Slope m equals 2 over 5, and it goes through this. Always label your points x and y. We'll put 1 in for y, so 1 is equal to 2 fifths and x is negative 3, plus b, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, so negative 6 fifths, plus b, we're going to add negative 6 to both sides, negative 6 fifths to both sides, and 1 is also 5 fifths, so 5 fifths plus 6 fifths is 11 fifths, that's b, and so y equals 2 fifths x plus 11 fifths. All right, the line of this one, that's pretty easy because we can just read the slope between them. This goes down 5 over 5. So down 5 is negative 5 over 5 is the slope. The y-intercept is right there, which is at negative 4, so x minus 4, y equals negative 5 over 5 minus 4, 5 over 5 is 1, so y equals negative x minus 4, negative 1x. Passes through these two points. First thing we find is the slope. Notice that there's no change in y. Zero slope, which means it's a horizontal line. y is 5 here, y is 5 there. Therefore, y equals 5 because there's no slope, just a y-intercept. Parallel. Parallel lines have the same slope. Now first I have to find the slope. That means put this in slope-intercept form. Move the 2x to the other side. It becomes negative. We get negative y is equal to negative 2x plus 7. Change all the signs. y is equal to 2x minus 7. The slope here is 2. Parallel slope is the same. Goes through this point, x and y. Follow the same procedure, negative 3 is equal to 2 times negative 5 plus b. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, so we have to add 10 to both sides, plus 10. And that is 7 is equal to, that was a b up here. 7 is b, so y is equal to? 2x plus 7 for number 4. Number 5, perpendicular. Here's the slope. So m for number 5, m is equal to, the perpendicular m is flip and negate. Opposite reciprocals, flip and negate. Passes through x and y. Same procedure. Right? Plug in negative 4 is equal to 2 over 3 times negative 3 plus b. 2 thirds times negative 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Divided by 3 is 2. Positive times a negative gives me negative 2 right there plus b. Add 2 to each side plus 2. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2 is b. So y is equal to 2 thirds x minus 2. Same procedure here, put it in slope-intercept form. Wait a minute, notice there's no y. Stop, slow down a little bit. We were rushing, there's no y. So, we add 5 to each side, plus 5. We get 2x is equal to negative 6, divide by 2. x is equal to negative 3. What does that mean? That is a vertical line. That goes through negative 3. Vertical line is undefined. Perpendicular to that is a horizontal line. It needs to go through 7 and 5. The y value should be 5. So right there, horizontal line, y equals 5. Boom. Point slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Make sure you know this. Make sure that... You remember these are 
minuses. I saw a few of you change that to plus today. The only time that changes is if your coordinates are negative. All right, x-intercept. So that's where it crosses the x-axis, which means the y value there is 0. So at the x-intercept, y is 0. So now we have a slope. We have a point, point-slope form, super easy. x and y, always label your coordinates. Minus 0 is equal to 1 half times x minus 3. And there you go. That's point-slope form. Slope passes through this, so y minus... Label your coordinates, x and y. Negative 7 makes that plus 7 is equal to negative 3 times x minus 4. That was easy. Moving on, parallel to this line. Parallel means same slope. Change this to slope intercept form. Move the 2x to the other side. Change the sign. Negative 5y is equal to negative 2x minus 20. Divide by negative 5 on every term. Negative 5 here, there, and everywhere. y is equal to positive 2 fifths, because a negative divided by a negative is a ne positive. And the slope, therefore, is 2 fifths. Parallel means m is equal to 2 fifths, passes through this point. So, uh, y, x and y. Minus 6 is equal to 2 fifths times x minus 7. All right, perpendicular means the slope is going to be opposite reciprocal, flip and negate, so negative 1 third passes through these two points, fill in the blanks, y minus 1 is equal to negative 1 third x plus 4. Right. Okay, writing an equation that's parallel and perpendicular. All right, I'll do it for one of these, same procedure for the other one. You can either use the two points and use the same procedure as we did before. Find the slope, use the slope, and plug in the point. Or another way to do that is count, right? This goes up 3 over 5, so slope is 3 over 5. And then we have a point right here. If it's going to be parallel, that uses the same slope. So plug in negative 6 for y is equal to 3 over 5 times 2 plus b. Same procedure. We've got 6 over 5 here plus b. Negative 6 there. Subtract 6 over 5 from each side. Okay, that's 1 and 1 fifth. So we subtract that, we get negative 7 and 1 fifth plus b uh, equals b. So y is equal to 3 fifths x minus 7 and 1 fifth or 36 fifths. Either way, you want to write it, mixed number or improper fraction is fine. And then for the perpendicular, perpendicular slope is opposite reciprocal, so is negative 5 over 3. Same procedure. All right. Number 13, a, vertical, a horizontal line has a zero slope. m equals 0. So perpendicular, m is undefined, which means it is a horizontal line, super easy. That goes through negative 2, so x equals negative 2. Reverse procedure right here. This is undefined. A horizontal, a uh, perpendicular line to this is going to be this way. Okay, that's the perpendicular slope. So that's y is equal to negative 2. Now the parallel line is pretty easy too. Parallels this one. On here is x is equal to 1. And parallel here, y is equal to negative 2. Easy peasy, moving on. All right, equation in slope intercept form and in standard form. Okay, so just distributive property here 4 over 7x. And multiplying a fraction with a whole number, 3 times 4 gives me 12 over 7 is equal to 1 minus 2 over 7. Add 2 over 7 to each side and 
we get y is equal to 4 over 7x plus 14 over 7 is 2. Okay, now we want it in standard form. We need the first term to be positive and all integers. So we're going to multiply the whole thing by the denominator by 7. Okay, so then we have 7y is equal to 4x plus 14. And then move the 4x to the other side. We get negative 4x plus 7y is equal to 19. Change all the signs. 4x minus 7y is equal to 19. The only thing I want to point out in number 16, if there's a negative in front, that also gets distributed. So when you do that, you get negative x plus 15. All right, and the rest of it is the same procedure as ever. Here, determine if it's arithmetic. Just see what the common difference is. Notice that the difference here is 2. Here it's 4, so no. Here, the common difference is negative 6 every time, so yes, and it's negative 6. All right, write an arithmetic sequence. Remember, super trick, we went up here 2 sixth or 1 third. So I'll just start with 2 sixths, and we can simplify that later. And then from 2 sixths to get back down to negative 1 sixth, I have to subtract 3 sixths. Now notice this can be simplified, so a of n is equal to 1 third n minus 1 half. And then plug in here the 30, so a of 30 is equal to 1 third times 30 minus 1 half. Third times 30 can be simplified, that gives me 10 minus a half, and that is 9 and a half. So that's the 30th term. All right, same procedure for number 20. Um, here we want to find all the residuals. All right, so to do that, we will plug in this value for x right here. Okay, so y is equal to 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 64 minus 23.5. Okay, and that gives me 8.5. So I'm going to have 8.5 here. I'm going to subtract that, and that gives me a residual of 0.5. Same procedure for the rest of these. Boom. There you have it. Uh, here, these two cancel out. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, minus 1 cancel out. 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 cancel out. So I'm left with negative 0 0.5. And if it's within 1, then yes, that is a good model. Yes, they're evenly distributed across the x-axis, the residuals here. All right. And... Write a linear function. This is the same as if you had coordinates 5 and negative 3, right? Because this is the x inside here, and this is y, and 4 and 1. So same procedure. Find the slope and plug in a point. All right. Determine if they're parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Um, put them in slope-intercept form. So we'll move these over. Let's see. I'll do number 23 here. And after putting them in slope intercept form, I'm going to inspect their slopes and see are they the same or are they opposite reciprocals. Two thirds and four fifths are neither the same, so or opposite reciprocals, so neither. Okay, and we'll do the same thing for the rest of them. Um, and yeah, that's about it. It's pretty easy. Uh, positive negative correlation as amount of gas tank in. Okay, as this goes down, or this goes up, or the other way around, as one increases, the other decreases, so that's negative. Okay, they show opposite things, height of a person and length of the hair, no correlation. These, put them in order. Once you put them in order, from least to greatest, you can see that as x increases, y decreases, so that's a negative correlation. There you have it. Good times. Study, 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 practice, come prepared.